recently I seen some reports that OG and Anobi could go for three first round picks. That's what the Raptors want. That's what Kevin O'Connor from the Ringer reported. And I have a question for you. One one is that is he worth that? Is he worth mm. three unprotected firsts? We saw DeJounte go for a similar price. And what teams should go after him? That's a great question because currently in his contract, mid-level, it's pretty easy to match the salary. And his age 24 season, he fits many teams, almost any team's core. I think the first and the most initial team that comes to mind is the OKC Thunder, which I thought was the team Kevin O'Connell and co. were were talking about with the offer of three first-round draft picks. For OG, he's not much a self-creator, and even at that, he struggles to even attack a closeout in some ways. Defensively, he's been a defensive player of the year candidate this season, and we know he can hit the three ball off catch and shoot looks at a near 40% clip he has the last couple of seasons. If you put him off Shea, I think it would be the perfect spot for him, and it really takes that load to create for himself even further off if he's playing off of Josh Gideon, better yet, Chet. Like, that duo of Dort and OG together, that would be maybe the best window in all of basketball. I think it would be really interesting to watch, and I agree. OKC is a very good spot for him. OG's a good player, averaging 17, shooting about 37% from three, 39% on catch-up, um, three-point shots, and 44% from the corners. Now, how valuable is OG as a wing? To me, I feel like it really depends on the team and how many assets they have. I feel like, as of recently, there have been teams that are collecting first-round draft picks and stockpiling them for this exact reason. OKC is one of them that have a plethora of picks that they can trade at a moment's notice. And I'm going to start with them first. You mentioned it briefly. Shea with OG, with Dort. I mean, Dort and OG sounds like a nightmare defensive that you want to go up against. Dort can take somebody out of the game. OG can take somebody out of the game. Those two as your wing stoppers really makes life hell for opposing offenses. Then when Shets is healthy, what he can do as a defender on the back line, I think is very, very intriguing. Now would be a great spot for him. The second team is the Knicks. If you can get OG and the Knicks have five first round picks in like I think the next two drafts, Brunson, you move RG to the two, OG to the three, and Randall to the four. That's a pretty good young core. You know, I'm not sure what the ceiling for that is, but now having Quinn Grimes come off the bench, I, I like this a lot for the Knicks. I do. I think the Knicks would be really good with this trade. Then I look at the Mavericks. Hmm. If they can get OG, which I would love for Luca, Dinwiddie, Luca, Dorian Finney Smith, who I think right now is second in toughest matchup difficulty in the league, seventh is OG. So you'd have OG and Dorian Finney Smith both starting, who are wing stoppers, and then Christian Wood at center. And then the last one is the Pacers Tyrese Halliburton, Buddy Heald, OG, Miles Turner, and Mathurin will fit in there somewhere in the future. But those are the teams I think that make the most sense for him. I have one more, but real quick on the Mavericks point. Do you think that would be the only deal, that alone? And if so, would that move the needle enough in the Western hierarchy? That alone won't move the needle enough, but you can't count out what Luka can do. I think that Luka, it's clear that he needs some more talent. And I think he showed last playoffs that with the talent he had, he can make the conference finals. Adding a player of OG's caliber, mostly defensively, will help them out a lot. Okay, I see. Yeah, that's true with Dorian and Finney Smith. The last team I would add in here, and it would be tough because of the quality of their first round draft picks. They have a top 15 player, they're in the Western Conference, and they have a brand new owner who seems like will be a little bit more willing to spend into the luxury tax. That's the Phoenix Suns. After extending down to rate in the season, they've fallen below 500 due to injuries. And I kind of wonder what a duo of Mikel Bridges and OG Anobi could do defensively. We talk about OKC. And this Suns offense, I think OG would be an even higher floor raiser on the defensive end. And given Nate in the season has been underwhelming, and the Raptors have needed a center for a long time now, the Suns have all the first round picks, all of their seconds. If you gave the Raptors damn near every single one of them, with pick swaps, you throw in Aiton, 
Obviously, you'd have to toss in a Gary Trent or some expiring contract to match the salary. Maybe it's Chris Boucher. And then a third piece. I think for each of those two teams, that could be a sleeper deal between the two parties. I think what sucks about the Suns right now is that as underwhelming as DeAndre Ian has been, trading him in a package to get OG is a lateral move because you need a center. As underwhelming as Ian is, he's still a good center. He's a top 10 center. We just think he should be better. So as underwhelming as he is, trading him doesn't improve the team. And that kind of was the dilemma in the offseason about paying him or not paying him. Because if you don't pay him, you're going to get much worse. So you might as well pay him. And DeAndre, Ian, he's a he's a good player. He really is. He's just underwhelming. And I, I don't know if OG to the Suns makes a difference unless Aiton stays and they get him. That's valid enough. I feel like with DeAndre defensively, he's good, but he's not exactly punching the team up a weight. And then you're right. I mean, trading first round picks plus eight and to get OG, it's like, eh. I feel like Gain's negative value contract, to be honest with you. Given he hasn't been consistent offensively, you just don't know what you're going to get from him on night, night to night. And really, I don't, I don't know if he's much better than where he is right now. And with OG, I think the value he brings just as a defender alone, that's something for Phoenix in the postseason, having two elite wing defenders against a team like the Warriors, the Grizzlies, or the Nuggets, that can really take the entire, like, Mikel last year running up for defensive player of the year, that can take away a lot for opposing teams in the uh, playoffs for sure. So, I struggle with the matchup against Denver with no center. That's true, because Aiden's been pretty good. In the Raptors, you'd have to make it a three-team deal. That would include, man, what backup? What team Unless they get Christian Coloco. And he's not even ready yet. <laughs> so I have some trades here. Now, the OKC trade is first. These are trades I have for OG and Anobi. First one is the OK is for OKC. Lou Dort and two firsts for OG and Anobi. I know it's tough to trade Lou Dort, but I look at if OG goes to the OKC Thunder, okay, SGA starting for sure. Giddy starting. He's not coming off the bench, so he's going to start for sure. OG starts. Do you still start Lou Dort at the two and then move OG to the four, you know? So I, I think Jalen Williams is more the four than Shet When he's healthy, he's the five. So I, I think they'd probably have to trade Lou Dort or a Jalen Williams for OG. I can see that. One thing with OKC's offense we haven't really talked about this year, it's been more five on out. And so I feel like, honestly, they could run some OG at the four because offensively they're just spacing it. They're getting a bunch of guys out and he'll be sitting in the corner half the time. And with Lou no. Dort defensively, he can still guard some threes. Now, for the Thunder, would that be their own first-round picks they're trading, considering they're now getting into that playoff mix? Or would it be some of the ones that they've acquired from the Clippers and the Heat deal as well? I think it'd probably be their own. I, I think the Heat right now, you see that they're trending downwards with the Kyle Lowry move was horrendous. And the Clippers, you don't know yet. The Clippers are, are kind of like a wild card because you don't know what their health is going to be like. The next team, the Knicks, this is my trade package. Cam Reddish, Ob Toppin, and Jericho Sims with a first for OG. Cam Toppin, Jericho Sims, and Ob Toppin. Yes, Cam Reddish, Ob Jericho Sims, and a first for OG. Just one first. Yeah, because they're getting they're getting Cam Reddish, bro. What can I say? You're gonna have to give up. I think two more firsts. So they've got three this upcoming year. They got Dallas's, which is lottery protected, and they've got the Wizards, right? And, and we're giving them D &D. a starting center in Jericho Sims. <laughs> Come on. What are we... I like Jericho a lot. You're giving them a backup center, a, probably a backup power forward, and maybe a backup small forward in Cam Reddish. <laughs> I know Masai likes these toolsy wings that they can develop into shooters. I think you would have to give up the Mavericks pick, your own this season, and then a future pick, maybe in like 2025, 2026, plus those players, because really those first-round picks are not going to be that good anyways. And the next one, I'm, I'm not a fan of this trade, but I had to make the contracts work in the trade machine. It's for the Mavericks. It's Dwight Powell, Josh Green, and a first-round pick. You're, you're lying on these first, bro. Masai is not going to answer the phone if you keep doing this. Josh Green is good, man. Did you see him cross up some guy in Cleveland? He is good, but Josh Green is kind of like a Quentin Grimes where – is he ever going to be an all-star now? He won't even come close, probably. I, I, I feel like with 
I, I'm just very hesitant to give up two first round picks. I'm giving you a good young player. And and that's why with the Knicks, I'm giving you OB Topping. He's a good young player that he can average 16 and 8 in the right situation. But does Toronto want that? That's where I'm having a hard time there, with like an OB Topping. Yeah. And this is the Pacers trade. It's Chris Duarte, Jalen Smith, and a first for OG. If you add in one or two more firsts, let's say you put in two firsts. Chris Duarte is like 25 already. I'm just not that into Chris Duarte, given his age and what Toronto is looking for. They have a couple of different needs. Number one, a point guard. I think Fred Van Fleet this offseason, he's very potentially going to be out of Toronto. You look at all these rebuilding teams that need shooting, he can come in and be a plug-and-play piece. So if they're looking to move Van Fleet, they're going to want to get a pretty young piece and a guy with upside per se because – if you're moving OG, you're also moving Freddie. You're probably going to look into moving Gary at the right deals. That's three starters, or technically two and a half. So you're going to want a guy probably under 21 years old with some all-star potential. And none of those guys have all-star potential. Cam Reddish is the only one that maybe you're thinking that. And even then, I'm, I'm out on the Cam bus. These are the teams I have, though. So when talking about OG and Anobi, which team do you want to go out of the Knicks, Mavericks, Pacers, and OKC? I would say OKC number one. Number two, Indiana at the three alongside Benedict. Because they can use more on the wing, some versatility. And they're also trying to be competitive now. Number three, I'll go the Knicks. And number four, the Mavericks. I feel like Dallas has enough of these wings. And he's not necessarily going to be that shot creator. That they, they need to make maybe a couple of moves here to really help out Luka some talent. I'll be honest, for me, it's number one is the Mavericks. I think that OG in Dallas, with what he can do defensively as a spot of a shooter, I feel like it moves the needle a little bit for me when it comes to the Mavericks roster and what they can do in the playoffs. They have to make another move, but it moves the needle for me a little bit. Number two, OKC, SGA, Giddy, Dort, OG, that is defensively terrifying. And I'd love to see that pairing, especially when Chet comes back. Number three, Indiana, just for what Tyrese can do when he has better players around him. Like you said, Matherin, OG, Miles Turner probably re-signs. I, mm-hmm. I think that's a good young core. Number four, the Knicks, just because I don't know where he really fits into all that. I know he's a really good wing, a coveted wing around the league, no doubt. But I, on this Knicks roster, like if I plug and play him on the Knicks currently, I don't know if that moves us anywhere up. 